these are going to go on all the trucks. This is a uh, solid vinyl uh, left over from the project, the scrap material. He's cutting them at three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, and eight foot long. And he's cutting them that length exactly. He's going to rip them down the middle. And every single truck is going to have a container on their truck with a four foot, a three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, and eight foot gate spacer. So when they go to set their gate post, they lay it on the ground to the first post it's set, and they level the next post to it. We want to get away from tape measures. When they're trying to hold the tape measure to measure that gate opening, it's a very inaccurate. You're off a quarter inch, half inch to a pre-made gate, the homeowners will start to complain about the gap. So we've got to keep it quick and efficient and easy. We have sure sets on the trucks, which are adjustable and does, does all of that. But what I've noticed over the years, the guys get tired and relax and, and don't want to change the setting on the sure set from 91 inches down to the four foot, down to the five foot for the gate spacing. So if we just put these in a truck, years ago when I ran a crew, it was on then my you have truck. To teach them too to hold it level. A little bit flat. Big slope. So we're not done yet. He's going to 45 this end and 45 this the opposite way, make a trapezoid. No matter what angle you are, you're perfectly at 48 inches. So this end will get cut at a 45 this direction, and this one will cut the opposite direction at yep. 45. So no matter what we're doing, we're still going to be 48 inches traveled across that over. So we rack our gates. What happens is the gate gets skinnier laterally. As you go up, across it gets skinnier. Yep. So if this lays flat across that opening but does not follow the grade, then the gate will be too short for the opening. You've got to have so this follow the grade. Want them to measure it on the slope. Because the, the gate follows the slope. Yep. So you'll cut all your rails on the gate for the certain dimension and as it cracks, the gate will get shorter. It does get shorter. It squeezes in. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cool. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Everybody can do this. You a bird? Cheap, cheap. Cheap, cheap. I'm Mark Olson. Luke Gibson and I have a combined 50 years in construction as fence contractors. In that time, we have both experienced failures and success. We travel the country talking with other contractors who share their experiences in hopes that their stories can make you a more successful contractor. Good morning, you're on camera. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do you get a lot of people walking in? A lot. See, we don't. Yeah, well. We, we get a lot of people walking in that want to do their own projects and they... We didn't used to. Uh, it's, it's increasing, continuously increasing, the amount of people coming through. I'm impressed. Sitting in the back office, all these people constantly coming inside. You'll see this showroom with two or three couples in at a time or two or three customers at a time in here. Now, remember, we're not just a fence business here. We also have the landscape and outdoor living space here yeah, as well. Right. So because they go hand in hand, uh, Unique Escapes operates out of here as well. So the, a lot of the, there's a lot of crossover between their clientele and our clientele. Our clientele might be looking for a fireplace. Their clientele might be looking for a fence. So once they get in here, like, oh, wow, you guys have a fence. I need that too. Or, oh, wow, you guys have a barbecue. I didn't know you guys did that. So we built this outdoor bar and kitchen. Coffee room. These are, these are all projects that we've done. Put the outdoor bar, kitchen fireplace. A lot of stove work. That one behind you we did. That's aluminum pergola that opens and closes. Kitchen, the bubbler, the fire pit. I'm sure you got one of these. Only Sean, Josh, or Dan can open this gate. <laughs> I'm not any of those people. Good thing we're with Sean. Good thing it's already open. Gate operator stuff. Vinyl caps, hinges, latches back there. Pergola kit stuff. And then, yes, it's. There's the kids. Back to yards ones and Mr. Fence ones. Kits assembled. There's all. Tools. Yep, equalizers, extractors. All this stuff is available on MrTools.com, right? Yep, yep. So All of our crews are using these laying out vinyl fence. New redesigned protectors for so vinyl the hose. That's, the this is for a wood fence with the top rail already okay. installed. Yep. So the top rail goes through there and the wood post sits in there. 
you had uh, you had a visitor a couple weeks ago too, right? Chris Steele. Chris Steele was here. Yep. Yeah. So why did he come? Chris Steele came to learn how to build vinyl gates in our shop. He brought one of his foremans with him that worked with our crew for two or three days. Uh, get him up to speed quickly. So in the busiest time, most people, I've had people call me and say, hey, I want to do that too. I'll hit you up in the fall. That's cool. That's great. But Chris made the decision that it was important enough that he did it even when he didn't have time to do it. And you still, and you can go right back to work and put it to work because you don't want to learn it in November and then not sit ar sit around not build a fence till March. That's true. I've had people say I can't afford. Maybe can't afford not to, because if you could, if you can't afford to get here, you probably need to make it a priority um, if you think it's a value for you and your company. And it's not you. you know, they could go visit. Go visit. I mean, you could talk to any one of us, and that's we right. could name somebody in your area, that's, that's somebody right. closer that you could go talk to. That's amazing. Go, go, go to your, I mean, oftentimes we're scared to talk to the competition uh, or another fence company. We don't want to give away trade secrets, but at the end of the day, we're all in the same boat fighting the same battle. I'm going to get on the same team. How many unique ways do you think there is to get a fence installed? <laughs> right. You'd be amazed how people are doing the same way you are too. I'm like, wow, you guys figure that all on your own? Like we're all fighting the same thing. So we're all going to be gravitating towards similar There's methods. Not really anything that we can divulge about how we're going about business. It's so revolutionary. No. We've changed the industry. Yeah. I mean, because somebody is going to pick it up and it's going to see it working. So just don't have trade suits, really. Pretty much everything that I have, I didn't, I'm not super smart. I didn't just learn this overnight. It's because I've paid attention to other fence companies. I've met with other fence companies. I've laid at night trying to figure out a solution to a problem. Um, so I've done the same thing that people are coming here. That's why I try to, to give back and help as much as I possible. All my best ideas were stolen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are pergolas that we install. These are aluminum pergolas. With louvers that open and close. Vinyl pergolas built out of vinyl fence material. That's just engineered for five and a half rail, five by five post, six by six post, seven eighths by three inch top. So we're showing the flagstone patios that we do. Lined up the fence aisles. They go this way. More of your traditional display showing more styles. But we also did what the unique does. We have grass, we've got pavers more grass, the different type of rock that we sell. So we built this in that fab shop. That's a steel cactus. All those welds are put on there. Nice fire pit. We sell these fire boulders. So even if it's a little car, it makes a big statement. There's no mistaking who's at your house and what. Well, maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. Support team. Let's go look on this side. It's not chrome, but I love this one. Not yet. Working on it. So, automotive, automotive equipment. So what? He goes out to the job site. So he'll he'll change fluid in the job site. He'll fix things. Broke down trucks to the job site. Oh yeah. He's got stuff. Well, that's it. That's so one acre. People will uh, work for Mr. Fence. Mr. Fence of Indiana. We've got five three man teams with two floaters. We have three people in the shop. We have two salesmen, plus myself, three girls in the office, plus two part time. Between 29 and 30 people right now here and then unique escapes were out of here and they'll have uh, three girls in the office um, and the general manager so four but we have 17 acres they operate out of on the other side of town so the yeah. crews operate out over there and there's probably another 15 guys on that side of the business unique, so your company too. unique escapes is yes uh, vintage iron is not mine and they have probably five guys that work out of here every day so as far as the footprint goes we have maximized this footprint to the max well, yeah, well, that's what, it's really hard for everybody that's not here to understand. There is not a lot of, there's not a lot of space here. They're doing a lot of work and a lot of volume and a lot of business out of a very small yard. So it doesn't take a five acre lot. You don't need to go spend a million and a half dollars 
for a five acre lot, it's just about organization. It's about making sure that you maximize what space you have available to you. So prime example, turn around right here. And you can see above the trucks, they've got more inventory hanging out of the rafters. So they're trying to use every single bit of available space. And it's not a junkie. They don't just come into the yard and throw their stuff in there. And say, oh, no, no. That, that'll, that'll, <laughs> that'll make me, this morning I found some small pieces of trash on the ground. We stopped what we were doing to pick those up. You and, me have, you, yeah. you and me have that in common. And um, you go to Luke's place, Luke's place is organized. Yeah. I mean, that is, there is just, I can't tell you how important I feel that is. It's very important. One, Whether I mean, you have a big yard or a little yard. It, it just shows uh, that, that you care about what you're doing. If you just throw a bunch off your truck and in a pile, and you continuously do that, pretty soon you're gonna have just piles of mess everywhere. And you become disorganized, it takes you time, you lose money. Everything you think you're making, you're losing because you're disorganized. So you were talking in a little bit ago, let's go to that. You were talking about cleaning the trucks. Okay, that's yep. something you and I do the same. Yep. So we have a standing, uh, every other Friday, we have a detail shop and we take one truck. It doesn't pick the dirtiest truck and the dirtiest one gets in and gets professionally detailed. Yep. Top to bottom. And we just feel like that, if that truck's clean, they take better care of it. Doesn't matter if it's The guys truck. take better care of it. Yeah. The, people are looking at you, right? So when I say image is everything, I really mean like image. For us, we live and die by that image. Those trucks are parked in front of the job site all day. Every neighbor is watching your team and that truck. Watch that project go together. Um, we just had a lady a message us on face uh, email us yesterday for a job we did on Friday. She was on Sunday. She messaged me for a job we did Friday. She was blown away at how professional the, tr the truck looked, the crew did, how quickly they built the project, and she's raving about us on Facebook. You know, so the the deck is probably just as good as anyone else's deck, but she's raving about us because of how quickly we did it, how organized we were, how smooth the system was, and how professional everything looked. You didn't come difference. in one day and then come back and do a little bit of work and then come back three days later and do a little bit more and then come back two weeks after that. And she had to call 12 times in between and it's in and out. And in and out. Seven hours that dock was built with a 14 foot by 10 foot dock. We built seven hours, start to finish, railing and everything. So she was thoroughly impressed with that. I think, so for us, I've been struggling to, to keep my team, keep their trucks clean. Been fighting that for 20 plus years. I get it. They're tired when they come home. They don't want to clean out the truck. They don't want to clean out the mess inside the truck. Keeping tools organized in the right spot. You know, we'll look at that later. I'll show you that everything has a home. So I'm trying to find a system that gives me my result. My result is I need tools where they're supposed to go and I want the truck clean. If we pay our team to do that, at the end of the day, they're tired, they're frustrated, they're going to skip. It's hard to police that. So what we started doing is now we got the four day work week. So every truck one day a week is shut down. So when that truck is shut down, we have one of our shop guys, his full-time job is to inventory the truck, check all the tools, reorganize them, put them where they're supposed to go, and wash the truck every week. So inside and out, wash the truck. That process, I think, is gonna help us. It's um, something we just started doing. Kick it off. I'm tired of fighting the team members to do it, and I'm gonna give somebody else the specific task. That's just, this is how important it is to me. Your job is to make sure it's done. I got you know, kickback at first was, well, I'm not cleaning up the guys, the truck is their mess. That's your job. It's officially your job. Yeah, we tell, we make sure that our people Those, that are in the shop need to know that they're team support. Yeah. So you, you run support and it's your job to support those guys so they can That's get it. out there because the guys, that they're the ones out there making the money. Those well, we, guys we are, all are making the money. If there's any, any piece of it away, right? The whole system starts to fall apart. But you're right that that's what they're best at. We're paying those guys high dollar to go build fence. I don't need them in the yard. I don't to need them garbage. I need to pick up guards and we load trucks and wash trucks. there and get holes dug and posts in the ground. Yeah. And if they get dirty, they're going to get the inside of the truck dirty, right? I, there's no way not to have that happen. So I got to find a system or solution because I want trucks clean. Yep. That's what I want, right? So I'm willing to pay to have that done. And I think it's more cost effective to pay somebody th their job. They get better at it. It's routine. Mm -hmm. They're doing it over and over and over. They know the truck in and out. Um, I'll give you feedback after we do this for a long period of time. We've but so been far doing it's working. the detail for a long time and the guys love it. They, now they call me up and they're like, hey, my truck's dirty. Can I have the next one? Have the next one. I love it's it. Perfect. And I'm not, it's 150 bucks every two weeks. Yeah, it's, and the truck's clean. Yeah. Spotless. Oh, I know. We use a detail. I had three of them detailed over the weekend. I'm not, I don't send my big trucks there, but my sales vehicles, my vehicles, it's important that they stay clean. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've had three of them detailed over the weekend by a professional detail shop. Yep. Um, very cool. important. What do you do for Mr. Fence? Um, I answer the phone, help walk-ins, do all the invoicing, 
It's your customer relations. You're front facing. You're the one that gets to take all the calls if they're not happy. So you, you really want everybody to be happy. Most of our people are happy. And that's not even hard. <laughs> so if you had to describe Mr. Fence and your uh, experience working here in one word, what would it be? Um, high energy. High energy. Dog would <laughs> that's pretty accurate. Sean King is high energy. He's, he's a go get him charging all the time, right? Yes. Who are you? What do you do here? Oh, hi! <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned you. Though. Thanks. <laughs> I don't have any makeup on. We don't Stop. care. <laughs> I do everything. You do everything. About, yeah, I do everything. If you could uh, describe Mr. Fence in one word, what would it be? Gosh, there's so many words. Effective. There you go. Effective. I like good, it. Good one. I like it. So what's in that fridge? Um, these are wraps that our crews take with them every morning. And why do you do that? Um, so that they can eat That's some... crazy. <laughs> why would you ever do that? So they can eat something nutritious and okay. have energy throughout the day. So it's just making sure everybody gets a good meal and they always show up. It's easy for them to throw something in the lunchbox and get going. Quick and easy and they get fed. They don't have to stop at the gas station and get a bunch of garbage. Right. More productivity. More productivity. Do you have nap pods? Do you feed your crew just like Facebook and Google? Is there nap pods somewhere that I haven't seen? <laughs> we got, yeah. Oh, they have hammocks on the trucks. Hammocks, okay. So yeah, they have nap pods. They don't have hammocks on the trucks. That's not true. There's no resting on the job site. <laughs> uh, we do buy water in bulk. I don't think I showed you that. We got we do that too. case uh, pallets this is the of water. Second, this is the second ice machine. I saw that uh, Midwest fence up in Fort Dodge, Iowa did the same thing. They had ice. Yeah, I've seen some other guys that actually like hire a c ice company, bring in bags of ice into a cooler every day. They just stock it. And you tell me that's cost effective for them. You know, this is my second one here. This is probably the third or fourth one I bought. Each one's three or four thousand dollars. Yeah. So what he's going to do is they're going to put those pieces that they've already cut in here, and they cut out the little piece so that'll fit all the way down inside here, just like it normally would. And this goes in here. And it'll also have aluminum in it. I'm just aluminum in here and aluminum in here. Two different pieces of aluminum. They route their holes tall. So we've got a little bit extra room so if the gates can rack, they'll put one screw in, one screw in here, and then the crew on the job site will actually add the other three screws after they rack it to the correct opening. Do you have a template you use to get all those screw holes in exactly the same spot? Okay, so you just put a hinge on there, and then it's perfect every time. Okay. Because what's very important is the crews put that hinge in exactly the right spot so the two screws bite through both rails. You can't put the hinge here, here, here. It has to go exactly. So they take that well, They take that other screw out and put the hinge on. Yep. Okay. Yep, that hinge has to go right there. He'll, he'll have it set so the guys in the field cannot mess it up. They have to go with the aluminum overlaps. So here's the gates and here's how he's got the screws. They've got it all. Same screw on each corner, so it's the bottom inside on every single and corner. The top inside. Right. Yep. Now, I can rack the gate. And right there, you've got probably a two or two or three inch drop there, I guess. That's the you Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Way you but the way we rack them in the field, we use a ratchet strap. Okay. So they'll hang the gate, they'll put the ratchet strap up here from the hinge side down, and they'll crank the ratchet strap, and that'll pull the gate up to where it needs to be. Then they'll sink the screws in and release the ratchet strap. Beautiful. That's how we can control the rack. The rack. Until the rails all lined up, it's all beautiful, and then put the rest of the screws in and we're done.